Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Part 10, doctrines of salvation. Salvation as faith and repentance. You know, um, when we read scripture, a lot of people confuse repentance. And they'll say things like, "If unless you preach repentance, you haven't preached the gospel. Okay, well... Sometimes in scripture, faith is never mentioned and repentance is for salvation. Most of the time, it's only faith that is mentioned for salvation. Sometimes you read the scripture and it says faith and repentance are mentioned. So which is it? And the answer is, uh, you know, to the question, first of all, what is the question? Is it faith? Is it repentance? Is it faith and repentance? And the answer is yes. Yes, it's faith. Yes, it's repentance. Yes, it's faith and repentance. What do I mean? Faith equals repentance. It is faith, which is repentance. The Bible never contradicts itself. So, uh, every mention of salvation is completely and totally true and cannot contradict other uh, mentions of salvation. So let's remember when the plain sense of scripture makes common sense, seek no other sense. So we want to take everything in its primary, ordinary, literal, usual understanding. And when we do that, then we understand salvation. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's belief. That's the faith. Well, belief is part of repentance because it's having that change of mind. When we find something or we think we've found something that we think contradicts something else in the Bible, We've misunderstood it because the Bible can't contradict itself. So you have to know there are no contradictions in the Bible. The contradiction comes from our own mind. Charles Ryrie said the only type of repentance that saves anyone is a change of mind about Jesus Christ. So repentance is a change of mind about Jesus Christ. Do you have to repent to be saved? The answer is yes. You change your mind about who Jesus is. Now, some people will say, well, you're preaching this easy believism. I'm preaching what the Bible says. It says that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. It says that if we trust him and we believe on him, we have salvation. Now, are we going to call God a liar in that? I'm not saying that the results of salvation aren't that the Christian is going to be repenting of sin. Okay. Some people want to say, well, you're preaching that we shouldn't, uh, we, we could just sin the rest of our life. The Christian should not be sinning the rest of our life. It's not as a justification for sin. A Christian is constantly repenting. I don't know about you, but since I came to faith in Christ, I've had to repent of a whole bunch of things in my life. Do you have daily devotions where you repent of yesterday and think how it should have been better? I know I do. Many times I think how I I messed this up and I could have I could have said these things at this time, Lord, and I didn't. I I could have acted this way at this time and I didn't. And if I had to be perfect in repentance, which some preach as turning from sin to be saved. First of all, if you say there's two things you have to be saved, you have to repent, which means turn from sin. I disagree with that definition. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I myself, I think I've preached it that way. I no longer preach it that way. If I have, I want to make sure that I'm repenting of preaching it that way right now. Uh, that as Christians, we should be turning from all sin. There's no doubt. But the unbeliever cannot turn from all sin. That's something that's impossible for them to do. They need to turn to Jesus Christ. So don't confuse the results of salvation, which is turning from sin, with the act of salvation. 
In the Bible, repentance is mentioned over and over and over, and we're going to get into this more Monday. We're going to have repentance continued. I don't want to uh, go through these things so much right now. I just want to introduce this one today on repentance. But repentance, uh, there are times where the Bible says the Lord repents. Well, he had a change of mind. Why? It was due to what he saw in our actions in, in the Old Testament. He saw uh, that uh, the people of Nineveh turned to him in sackcloth and ashes. So he had a change of mind about d destroying Nineveh. Their destruction came later when they became so uh, degraded, de degraded of a society, degraded. And... Um, but the Lord repented. He had a change of mind about what he was going to do. Now, there are passages that say we're supposed to repent of sin, which means we're have, supposed to have a change of mind and we are supposed to turn away from those sins. Those are the act that a Christian does. A Christian, once saved, turns from sin throughout the rest of his or her life. But the act of salvation is simply to believe and repent, which is to do the same thing, have a change of mind about Jesus Christ. To be saved, one must have a repentant or change of mind about who Jesus Christ is and how he can save you. Mark 1.15, and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Let's have a change of mind and let's trust the gospel. There it only mentions repentance. Acts 16, 31, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. There is faith, it's belief alone in Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 21, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. There it says both. Well, which is it? It's the same thing. It's having the change of mind and trusting Christ and what he can do for you that brings salvation. And when somebody, a repentant sinner, comes, he's never going to turn them away. Well, we'll close today with looking at the thief on the cross. Luke 23, 40, But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. This man... No doubt he recognized he was a sinner. So if someone recognizes they're a sinner, now that's entirely different than saying, uh, turn from all sin. He had a change of mind about who Jesus was, and he looked at him for salvation. He had no chance. He was about to die. He had no chance to uh, turn from all sin. He had no chance to work out repentance, he simply turned to Jesus, recognizing that he was a doomed sinner. Okay, now somebody wants to say, "Well, you're 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 splitting hairs. You you have to recognize you're a sinner." Well, I've never said you didn't. I, I don't know anyone that would turn to Christ who didn't recognize they're a sinner. But uh, in terms of the requirement of salvation. It's turned to Christ to have a change of mind about him. And when you uh, trust him, you have salvation. And that is repentance. So I hope you're getting some, something out of this. Let's remember the goal of this is so that we keep the gospel clear, that we don't add works to, to salvation, that it's simply faith alone in Christ alone. It's in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that we're trusting in, in him that we serve a risen Savior. I'll end with 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Those are two great verses to memorize that give us the gospel, that Christ died for us but he's not dead. He rose again. And when we put our trust in him for forgiveness of sin, he's freely 
given that to us. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today. I hope you're being blessed by this. I know I'm encouraged. Uh, just going through the gospel, it, it's really just giving me just a wondrous boost. And it's encouraging me uh, to, again, just more and more tell others about the free gift they can have in salvation in Christ. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.